Welcome back, listeners, to the Steel Scorpion Sports Podcast. Coming at you live from San Diego, California, I'm Jeff Miller. And from San Jose, California, I'm Mark Huffman. And Mark, first, shout out to the Chicago Blackhawks, who are hoisting their third Stanley Cup in six years tonight. That lets everyone know that we're recording this on a Monday, that the Stanley Cup Finals ended. So congratulations to my Blackhawks. Woohoo! Watching Kane and Taze yeah. and boys skate around the ice, kiss the cup, always a great sight. Hockey, hockey, hockey. I don't really follow. All I know is that I was reading Twitter afterwards and people were making fun of the NHL and Gary Dutton because apparently the Stanley Cup was not there in time. It did take quite a long time to get to the ice. And the best part of every trophy presentation in, say, the last 20 years is when Gary Bettman comes out to give away the Conn Smythe, which is the playoff MVP, and the Stanley Cup, the crowd boos him mercilessly. Like, think Roger Goodell at the NFL draft, but at every arena that he ever comes out to present a trophy. Beautiful. Yeah, my, my favorite conspiracy theory of all time is not the Patrick Ewing lottery or other such things. It's the fact that uh, David Stern planted Gary Batman as the commissioner of the NHL to uh, make sure that it did not gain on any uh, popularity of the NBA. And if so, he, he did a real good job. I do love that as well. That is possibly the greatest made-up story ever. Also, Mark, I don't know if you were watching tonight. I know you're a big soccer fan, but there was an exciting 3-3 draw with Mexico and Chile and Copa America. You weren't, you weren't watching that? I wake up for soccer every four years for the uh, Men's World Cup, and I, I'm paying a little bit of attention to the Women's World Cup going on right now because the U.S. is 1-1 and tied one. But uh, maybe I'll watch when it gets down to the, the Final Four teams. But other than that, we see when you told me we were doing a football podcast tonight i wanted to bone up so i watched some of the copa america i watched the u20 that means under 20 men's world cup that that wasn't what you meant no no if you want to talk football for a while you can let uh call me back in 10 minutes or so and then i can get to uh to the real football well we, well, we could steal one from Dan Patrick and do our five seconds of football. <laughs> and I think I just did. So we'll move on to football. And the purpose of this podcast, Mark, is we're in the off season. What better time to talk football than the off season, right? We've had the draft. We've had free agency. And luckily now, we've had Vegas release the over and under lines. And actually some of the lines for the games as well. But we're going to focus mainly this week on the overs and unders the win totals for the teams. And I know you were just in Vegas, so you want to give us a recap of where things stand? Yeah, actually, I shot around a few different books. Uh, I think I texted you at one point. I was looking at uh, when some, some sports books haven't even released it, the MGM properties. I was at Aria playing poker. They don't even, I asked the guy that sports book there, they don't even come out with their own runners until July, August, something like that. So they're behind the curve. I'm not sure what they're afraid of. I think they're I guess afraid they're going to set up bad number or something, but uh, I did look at different properties because I stayed downtown and played on the strip, so I looked at the, a few different casinos and went and grabbed their over and their totals, and like I told you, I found the Colts at 10, 10 and a half, and 11 uh, at three different casinos, so there's, I guess you can kind of like, you know, look around, try to find the number that you want, and of course, you know, there's different juice on each of those, so if you're really confident the Colts are going to go like 13 and 3 then you could take the uh, you could actually bet the 11 win total and get a, a better uh, price get a better return than a dollar or if you're not as sure if you're, you think they might go in five you can maybe book the 10 and a half instead of the 10 but yeah you can you can shop around right now and find different numbers for different teams or pretty much all I think within one win of each other but even those you know even that that one win difference can make a difference as far as what price you get Yes, as we saw last year with the Carolina Panthers, you know, some people might have fallen to the wayside and found a, although I'm not sure I ever saw it high enough that that you would have lost your under bet, but I guess there could have been people that took seven and a half or eight, eight would have gotten you there, so I don't know, but it's great. Yeah, I don't know if it ever got down to seven and a half, but I do remember, I think it was mostly at eight and a half, and I think you looked at it at eight and a half, and I was out there in August, 
and it's not St. Christina's at eight and a half. I think at the eight and a half, the price was like negative 160 or negative 170 or something. And then finally, I found a book that had it at eight. And that was okay to do that because I was confident they would finish under eight wins. And by going with eight instead of eight and a half, my price, instead of being negative 170, was, uh, I think it was even positive. It might have been like positive 110, positive 120, something like that. So it was a big enough difference for me that I was more than willing to bet it at eight than seven and a half. Yeah, I think the key there is waiting until August. I guess all the money had moved in against Carolina because when it opened, I think the eight and a half was more like a negative 115, maybe negative 120. So I'm sure the juice was increasing on that as all the money, smart money like ours, rolled in against them. But yeah. be that as it may, that was last year. The year before was the Raiders. That worked out well, too. But this is a new year, Mark. This is a new year with new bets needing to be made and advice for some of our listeners. So without further ado, why don't you walk us through what we're going to talk about tonight? So we're going to go down. We're actually going to use the uh, the Westgate numbers that came out in, I think, uh, early May. Uh, there were actually some numbers. There was one sports book this year that released over unders back in February, like a week or two after the Super Bowl. And um, the numbers that came out in May were actually pretty similar to those. The two biggest movers is that in February, the Niners were eight and a half, and uh, that number is now down to seven and a half. And back in February, the Colts were at nine and a half. And then with the signings of Andre Johnson and Frank Gore, they're actually now up to ten and a half. So those two teams have moved one win each. We're going to use the Westgate numbers that released in early May. We're going to go down each of the 32 teams. Uh, we'll go in alphabetical order by team name, and then I have some stats. I compiled some over under stats for the last 10 years. So for each team, I'll let you know how many times they hit the over and under in those 10 years and what their current streak is. I found it interesting when combining this data, like usually the over unders add up to more than total possible wins. So as you know, there's a possible max, a max possible number of wins is 256. Now, that can actually be less than that, because each of the last three years has been a tie, in which case there's only been 255 wins. So, even though the max is 66, the over-under usually adds up higher than that. So, um, last year it added up to 262. This year, the over-under is added up to 262 and a half. So, obviously, you might think there might be a little bit more value on the unders. But, over the last 10 years, there's been 157 overs that hit and 155 unders so Vegas once again is pretty good at what it done darn those people but we aren't looking for 30 31 or 32 over under bets to make right we need to find that one or two bets that are really key it worked out last year with Carolina a little closer than we thought it for a while but it worked out the Raiders the year before worked out well So let's remember that it's not that they're great at setting 32 lines. We just need them to be good at setting 30 lines and find those two that they're not good at. Very true. So as we go through each of these 32, I'll give the stats. We'll just uh, give, you know, a quick hitter, one or two sentence answer on whether we would take the over or under and why. And then as you do that, we each, I think, pick three that we like the most. And when we get to those teams, we will uh, expand a little further and uh, and say why we really like the over under for those three as we go along. All right. Well, let's get this party started. So I assume that the first team will be someone that starts with a Z. Uh, yeah. There are no zebras in the NFL. So the first team up we have the Bears. And over the last ten years, the Bears have had five overs and five unders. But the current streak is they've gone under each of the last two years. Their number for 2015 is 7, and uh, which the first I'll let you look over another. Point of clarification, can we push? I, um, I say no. You, you, I'll, I'll say you can have, we can each have two pushes for the total 32. In general, we need to uh, pick a side and they're over under. All right, well, I, I was, okay, not pushing, and I'm not going to on this one. I'm going to say Bears under. And the reason, they're switching coaches, switching defenses. They have to switch to a 3-4, in fact, who's a big Fangio. 
and their count their division is really tough. Yeah, I like that. I like that as well for a lot of the same reasons. New coaching staff, uh, they did lose Brandon Marshall. He was getting a little older, but he was still a pretty decent receiver. They still have Jay Cutler, who you know can throw three interceptions in a, in a game without a problem. And they did get Kevin White, but he's rookie. He might have some growing pains replacing Brandon Marshall. Like you said, the tough division. So I will take the under on the Bears as well. Next up, we have the Bengals. In the last 10 years, they've had six overs and four unders, but they are on a streak of four consecutive overs and the number for this year is eight and a half uh, I'll go first on the Bengals they're in the top division uh, you know, three teams from the division made the playoffs last year uh, this year the rotation is they play the AFC West and the NFC West so that's, that's pretty tough in itself, you've got some tough teams in there Broncos, Chiefs, Chargers Seahawks, etc. so I think they're going to finish right around this number. Andy Dalton's giving me a lot of confidence. I'm going to take the I think they'll be right around that as well. Good job, Vegas. But I'm going to say over because you said eight and a half. I think they're a nine-win team. The reasons you said, though, I don't put them at 11 or 12 wins. Maybe Andy Dalton gets hot and this is the year he breaks through, but the division's tough. Their out-of-conference schedule really worried me with the eight, NFC West especially, but I think somehow they get to nine wins. Because, it'll be close. I think Vegas has a, a good number there. The next team up is the Bills. In the last 10 years, they've had four unders, or four overs, rather, six unders, and their streak is they went over last year, so they had a streak of one. And this year they play the AFC South and the NFC East, and their official number is eight and a half, and you can go first on this one. Well, I like that they have a really good defense. I like that. Rex Ryan will try and utilize the ground game with Sean McCoy, the defense to win games. But I don't like their quarterback situation. And I don't like that they're in the AFC East where the other teams may just all be better than them. And you just mentioned AFC South, they'll get a couple wins out of that, but Indian Houston maybe not. I don't love it, so I'm going under. I'm actually going to the opposite on this one. I'm going to say over. Uh, by a lot. I think they can get to 9-7. and seven. Uh, They're lucky that they play the Patriots in the first four games. I think they play the Patriots in Week 2. It is Week so 2. Even if Eddie gets his uh, suspension reduced a little bit, they probably still uh, get to face Garoppolo. I just think they have the momentum with Rex Ryan and the defense that they're going to have. They do need to get decent QB play, but Kyle Orton is not walking through that door. <laughs> this is true. They need Matt Kaffa to be semi confident because I don't think Manuel is the answer. Next up, we have the Broncos. In the last 10 years, they've had seven overs, three unders, and like the Bengals, they've had four consecutive overs. I can thank Peyton Manning for that. Uh, of course, three of those four overs are with Peyton on board. Uh, this year, they face the AFC North and the NFC North, and the number for this year is 10. I'll go first on this one. I'm going to take the over. Two words, Peyton Manning. Enough said. All right, but I think you left something out. You said a streak of four consecutive overs, right? Yes. And you said three of those, Peyton Manning. I think you forgot to say thank you, Tim Tebow. He was the other one. Yeah. Thank you, Tim Tebow. And unfortunately, Mark, I'm also going to have to take the over there. I think even with Manning's late season last year, I'm expecting one last go from him. I don't think it'll be a great season from the Broncos, but 11 wins seems pretty doable. Next up, we have the Browns. In the last 10 years, they've had three overs six unders and one push. Their current streak is an over of one. When last year the number was six and a half and they eked out seven wins. This year they face the AFC West and the NFC West and their number is six and a half and your first up. Under. This is Cleveland, right? I mean, come on. They're in the one of the toughest divisions and they are the bottom feeder in that division. And then you just mentioned they play the AFC and NFC West. You already talked about how Denver, Kansas City, San Diego, pretty tough. 
Seattle, Arizona, heck, even St. Louis. I don't see a lot of wins on their schedule. I'm not 100% sure that they get to four. So six and a half, by the way, makes this one of my favorite three. I really think unders are the way to go. If they're going to try and incorporate Johnny Manziel at all into this team, oh, that's going to be a disaster. I'm going to love that. And if it's not Johnny Manziel, are they going to be calling Kyle Orton out of retirement? I mean, this it's not going to end well in Cleveland this year. Just like when the NBA Finals end and it doesn't end well, then football season starts and that won't end well. And then they're back to being Cleveland. Yeah, I'm going to have to under as well. Uh, they were not one of my top three, but uh, if I had to pick a fourth one, this would be it. Uh, I would echo every single thing that you said. The only thing I would add, the receiver core is awful. If anybody has a wide receiver uh, from the Browns for fantasy football this year, they should immediately quit fantasy football and find something else to do. There's literally no one on the team worthy of drafting. Uh, Brian Hartline, no thank you. Dwayne Bowe, Absolutely not. Um, they needed to draft wide receivers in the draft. They waited to the fourth round, like a project from Washington State. They just they don't have much of an offense. I, I'm not inspired by Mike Pettin. Uh, with the number of six and a half, I do like that under a lot. I think, like you said, I think four and 12 is probably their ceiling. I'd be amazed if they got to five or 11. And even if they get to six and 10, you still get the under. I mean, they have to go seven and nine to beat that number. So. Thank yeah. you. I, I very much like that under. Yeah, and I, I want to disagree with one thing you said. You said if you're in a fantasy league and somebody drafts a Browns receiver, they should quit fantasy football. I disagree. I want them to join my league. <laughs> Email me, will... support at steelscorpionsports.com. Attention, Jeff. Yes, I, I would play in any league of any price with that person for the rest of their fantasy career, I'm about. Next up, we have the Bucks in the last 10 years have had five overs and five unders. Uh, they have a current streak of two consecutive unders. They face the AFC South and the NFC East this year. The number is six. Uh, I'll go first on this one. I think six is a pretty decent number, um, but I'm going to go with the under. I'll say they finished five and 11, maybe four and 12. They have some decent pieces there. Uh, the defense should be decent. I think Winston will actually be okay, but the history of rookie quarterbacks, there's going to be an adjustment period. He's going to throw some picks, and so I'll say the finish. Uh, either four or five wins, I'll pick dinner. I'm going to have to agree. Under two words, Jameis Winston, rookie QB, those are two words as well. I think they're going to get some wins because they play that last play schedule, but I don't see them getting six wins. Four or five. I mean, they won two games last year. If you go from two games to five games, you know, that's three win improvement. That's great, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, I just – I don't see a lot to like there. They're going to be growing pains. But, hey, if they go from two and 14 to four and 12 or five and 11, Lovey's moving them in the right direction. Next up we have the Cardinals. In the last 10 years, they've had six overs – Four unders. Their current streak is two straight overs, and I will mention that not only is it a current streak of two overs, but they've just obliterated the numbers. In 2013, their over under was five and a half. They finished with ten wins, but missed the playoffs. And last year, their over under was seven and a half. They finished with eleven. So, and this year the number is eight and a half. So they get a little bit more respect from Vegas this year, and they face the AFC North and NFC North. And uh, you can go first on this one. Well, I'm going to say that that streak continues. I'm going to say over. Now, they won't obliterate it like they have the last couple of years because the number's bigger. But I think they're, you know, even 9 and 7, 10 and 6. I mean, I think they've got things rolling out there. The defense is really good. I think they're still way ahead of St. Louis. And now I think they're way ahead of the 49ers. So that helps within the division. And then. You know, because they'll end up with a few, you know, out of conference or out of division games. I think they'll get there. I'll agree with you. Um, you still won the points on the Niners as far as they're in the tough division, but the Niners aren't as nearly as tough as they used to be. I think they've done both games against the Niners this year. 
at the at worst they split with the Rams if not win both of those games. Um, so yeah, I think they'll get to, to nine or ten wins and get the over. Next up is the San Diego Superchargers. In the last ten years, they've had five overs, four unders, and one push. Their current streak is if not over the number each of the last two years. This year they face the AFC North and the NFC North. Their number is eight. Uh, I said at the top we could use two pushes. I'm going to use one of my two pushes right here on the Chargers. I think eight is a really good number. Seems like the Chargers, um, in my lifetime, in the last five to ten years, they finished eight and eight numerous times. At least that's what it feels like. So I'm going to say they go eight and eight this year and give them the push. If I had the lead, I would slightly lean towards the over. They could get the nine and seven. I was going to push here, but now that you have, I can't possibly do that because that would ruin our listenership and no one would have any idea what to do. So I will say, uh, yeah, I'll go slightly over because Phillip Rivers is a good QB. And if you have a good QB, you play guys like Cleveland and you know maybe steal one against Pittsburgh. Yeah, you got a chance to get to nine. So we'll go with it. a really, really, really slight over. Okay. Next up, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. In the last 10 years, they have four overs, six unders. Uh, they've gone over each of the last two years. They, like the Chargers, face the AFC North and NFC North this year. Their number this year is eight and a half, and then you're first. So I can't push at eight and a half, right? <laughs> Correct. Good. Uh, I'm glad you clarified that for me. Now, the Chiefs. Um, I do like that they went out and got Jeremy Macklin. They can't have worse receivers than last year, right? The defense is still pretty solid. Eight and a half, though. I mean, they're in a tough division. They do have to play the AFC and NFC North. It doesn't seem like they're going to get to ten wins. So I, I think the value here is probably to play the under. And you know, Alex Smith isn't lighting my world on fire. It doesn't excite me to make me say, go bet on them. So given that, I'm going to say – Eight and eight, so give me the under. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's probably tempting to take the over on the Chiefs here uh, at eight and a half. But like you, I'm going to go with the under. They have a tough schedule. They face the AFC North, so they get three playoffs teams in the Steelers, Ravens, and um, Bengals. Yeah. And then with the NFC North, that tough division, they get the, the Packers. The Vikings will be better this year. The Lions are good. And then even with that division, they get the Broncos twice, Chargers twice. And the Raiders should be better than last year. So, yeah, I'm going to go under as well and say they finish with um, seven, maybe even eight wins. But uh, they'd have to have a winning record to beat them or so. I'll go with the under there. The next team up is the Indianapolis Colts. In the last ten years, they have one of the best records. They have eight overs and just two unders. They have three straight overs, which, by the way, are the three years that Andrew Luck has been in the league. And uh, this year they face the AFC East and the NFC South. The number is ten and a half. This is one of my top favorite three. I like the over. Uh, each of the last two years, the Colts have won eleven games, eleven games, eleven games. I think they win at least eleven this year. Um, strength of schedule wise, they have the second easiest schedule in the NFL. They should beat the Jacks twice. They should beat the Titans twice. They have just some easy games. I look at the schedule. I see 13 and three, maybe 12 and four. Add in a potential injury or something that could go 11 and five. I just don't see them finishing 10 and six or worse. So the Colts over is one of my top three favorite bets. And after seeing Cleveland's schedule, I moved the Colts down to my fourth favorite. But I agree everything you said there. I do think 11 and five is terribly realistic. In a bad case, that that would be a really really bad year, I would think. Twelve and four actually seems really likely. There's an outside chance that you know thirteen and three. It unless you lose luck, I don't see how they're going to do worse than they've done the last couple of years. The teams that they play haven't gotten that much better, so I'm with you. All right, so we have consensus there. For we both have Colts over as one of our top three. The next one up is the Dallas Cowboys. In the last 10 years, they have four overs, six unders. The streak is one over. 
when last year the number was seven and a half and had 12 wins out of nowhere. Uh, this year they face the AFC East and the NFC South. Their number this year is nine and a half, and you're first up. Yeah, I love that they threw the hook in there because now I can't push. Um, they had 12 wins last year. The defense was surprisingly mediocre, which is all they needed because the offense was pretty good. Uh, Dez is still there. They did lose to Marco Murray. I think Run DMC is now the main back. That doesn't bode well. But I think they get to 10 wins, so I'm sadly going to have to take the over. But I don't like it. Yeah, this one's pretty uh, pretty close for me. I think Vegas has set a pretty good number here. This is one that I would not put any money on this because like nine and a half is pretty close. If I had to, I would lean. So I'm going to lean slightly the other way on the under. I just think that uh, everything kind of came together last year. They had a magical season with 12 wins, but the three years before that, they had eight wins, eight wins, and eight wins, six wins the year before that. So. For them to all of a sudden have double digit wins in back to back years, I'm just not sure I'd see it, especially with the running game being so depleted. They may eventually sign someone else, but right now, you're telling me that Joseph Randall and Darren McFadden are your, your two main rushers. I'll go ahead and roll with Denver on that one. Next, next up, we have the main Dolphins. Uh, in the last 10 years, they are just right down the middle with four overs, four unders, and two pushes. Though they have went over each of their last two years. They face the AFC South and NFC East this year. And their number is nine. Uh, I think it's my turn to go first on this one. This is another good number. Uh, I think I would lean slightly to the over. Tannehill is still improving, so I'm assuming he's going to get a little bit better this year. Lamar Miller was pretty good last year, and of course they added the best defensive lineman, or at least the best defensive tackle in all of football. Uh, I will say they get to 10 wins, partly with their uh, schedule chasing, they get to the AFC South, so they might lose to the Colts, but they should beat the Texans, Jags, and Titans, so I'll give them 10 wins instead of going over. I'm taking one of my pushes here. I think 9-7 is a perfect record for the Dolphins. They're a slightly better than average team. 9-7 puts you at slightly better than average. Yeah, all right. That sounds good on them. Next up, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. In the last 10 years, they have six overs, four unders. Uh, they have gone over each of the last two years, the two years with Chicago at the home. They faced the AFC East and the NFC South this year. Their number is nine and a half, and it's your go. Well, with Sam Bradford lumbering around the backfield for the short term, and by short term I mean maybe the first couple of weeks before he gets hurt, and then the Sanchez or Tim Tebow trotting out there, yes, I worked Tim Tebow into another team's description. How awesome is that? We're gonna have, we are gonna have so many podcast hits. I'm putting Tim Tebow in the headline. But be that as it may. I'm taking the under. I think Chip Kelly gutted the team of a lot of the veteran talent. He's vacated now Evan Mathis and Todd Herman's off the offensive line. Now they were getting older, but they were both Pro Bowl players in the last couple seasons. That's not a great idea. He got rid of his running back. Now he did sign a replacement. But still, getting rid of guys that are in a system and have been good and replacing them, it just doesn't always work out, especially running backs. Who knows? And he keeps deciding that he knows how to find wide receivers better than good wide receivers. So he's gotten rid of Djax, who was a head case, and he got rid of Macklin because he wanted more money. But he sells Riley Cooper. I'm not even sure what he does for you, so I'm going under. I think nine wins is about their ceiling this year. I'm going to go the under as well uh, for a lot of the reasons that you said. And I like Chip Kelly. I like a lot of what he does, but uh, I think the mad scientist is on a little bit Bad this time. I think he had too many players, and I don't really like what he did at running back. He has DeMarco Murray, who is coming off almost 550 touches last year. I think he's definitely going to get hurt at some point. But then his back is Ryan Matthews, who also is known for getting hurt all the time. So, you know, by week six, Darren Sproles might be the starting running back, and he's tiny. So, and uh, Chris Polk 
wants a decent backup, you got rid of him too. He's on the Texans now. So I'm not sure who will be running the ball for the uh, Eagles by Week 10. Uh, it could be some street free agent we haven't even heard of yet, but uh, I will take the under on the Eagles as well. Next up is the Atlanta Falcons. In the last 10 years, they have four overs, six unders. They've done under each of the last two years. This year they face the AFC South and the NFC East. The number is eight. And uh, I go first on this one. I'm going to take the over. They pick the AFC South, so as I mentioned before, uh, nice crossover schedule. You get the, uh, you to get the Jags and the Titans. There's two wins for you right there. Texans are capable of beating. And then with the AFC East, they should be able to the Redskins and then, you know, at least win another game against one of the other three teams. Their division, of course, last year was awful. The entire division should be a little bit better this year, but the Falcons will be better as well. Matt Ryan should have a good season. As long as Julio Jones and Roddy White stay healthy. They have a funny back combo with a rookie and a second-year guy with Coleman and Freeman. But I think eight wins is kind of too low. I can see them getting two by seven, so I'll pick you over here. Yeah, without even hearing the number, my, in my mind I had nine and seven for the Falcons. So hearing that the number was eight, I immediately thought, like you, went over. So I think their offense is just too good to be held down by some of those mediocre to bad teams they're going to face. They're going to find some wins on the schedule. Heck, they they found in a horrible year last year, what did they find, seven wins? So uh, six. Six wins? Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, they can't be any worse than last year. So, yeah, give me nine and seven. Take the over. Okay. Next up, we have the New York Football Giants. In the last 10 years, four overs, five unders, one push. They've been under each of the last two years. They face the AFC East and NFC South this year. The number this year is eight, and it's your go. I'm going to slightly lean towards over. I think they got a little more protection for Eli. The receiving core with Victor Cruz coming back and ODB will be there for the full season. He was amazing. Odell Beckham Jr. For those that need me to say his full name. Uh, they got Shane Vereens. The offense, I think, is going to be able to put up points. I don't. I think the division regresses a little. We already talked about Dallas coming back a little, Philly coming back. We haven't gotten to Washington yet, but I don't think they're very good. So just because of that, I think the Giants have a good chance. And you're telling me if they go 9-7, and seven, it's over? Then I'm going to say they're over. I'll keep this very brief. I'm going to agree with everything you said uh, and say that they go 9-7, and seven, maybe even 10-6. and six. I will use my extra time to ask, why is Odell Beckham Jr. known as ODB instead of OBJ? Because Odell, the D in ODB is part of his first name still. Like someone like Deshaun Jackson is a DSJ. The D and the S are both part of his first name. So why isn't he OBJ instead of ODB? If I really have to answer that, you are clearly not getting any street cred on this. So you re- seriously want me to answer? thing? Yes. Old, dirty, bleep. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so, of course I've heard of him. I didn't know that was the reason. That, well, uh, I, I don't know it's the reason, but it rolls off the tongue really well. So it just, I think it stuck. It does roll off the tongue better than OBJ. I'll say that. So yeah, right. maybe you're on something. I am. All right, next up we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. They are one of the worst teams over underwise in the last 10 years with three overs and seven unders, including four consecutive years of going under the number this year they face the AFC East and the NFC South. The number is five and a half. Um, first up, I'm going to say they extend their streak to five consecutive years going under the number. I will give you an early preview of 2016, though. I'm going to go, I don't even know what the number is yet. I'm going to say if they do go under this number, then the number next year will probably be around the same, four, four and a half, five, something like that. And next year, I'm kicking it over. Because next year, Borders will be in his third year. The receivers, Alan Robinson and Marcus Lee, will be in the third year. TJ Yeldon will be in the second year. Go get Dante Fowler, Dante Fowler Jr., their first round pick, is already out for the year. He'll be back for next year. Plus, we'll have a defensive help to get in next year's draft. So, you heard it here first. Take the over on the Jags for 2016, but for 2015, I'm taking the under. Yes, thank you, Blaine Gabbert, Blake Bortles. 
Byron Leftwich, David Garrard for the last 10 years. I agree. I'd say take the under. And as you said, the injury uh, to Fowler didn't help. But this is two years in a row they've lost their first pick. So I think, like you, next year they'll have a full year of the uh, – was it Lane Johnson the offensive lineman they drafted? Who's – who was the offensive lineman they drafted? For last year? Yeah, they got hurt in first practice. Um, well, whoever it was, it was left tackle. So he'll be back this year, and he'll get a full year now on his knee to get a little right and get used to the NFL game. Fowler will come back next year. They'll add people in the draft, like you said. I think 16 is looking up. So Jaguar fans, 16 is your year. To get more. Uh, Luke Jekyll. Luke, Luke Jokel. Jokel, that's right. So 2016 Jag fans, it's your year. And by year, I mean you're going to at least get to five, maybe six wins. Yeah, yeah. If I, if I could book, there's probably no book in the nation you can get this, but if I could somehow book the 2016 over for the Jags right now, I think I'm going to do it. Next up, we have the J E T S, Jets, Jets, Jets. In the last 10 years, five overs, five unders, a streak of one under. Uh, this year they face the AFC South and the NFC East. Their number is seven this year. And uh, your first up. Oh, I like that number because I feel like they are a seven and nine team. I'll slightly lean towards under, and the two words will be Geno Smith. I think the defense will be fine. It's going to be really scary actually with that front and those corners, but. Geno Smith may throw, if he is the quarterback, may throw a few pick sixes that cost them the game because the defense can't stop that. I am tempted to use my second push here, but I'm going to save it for later. I'm going to actually go the other way and lean slightly over. I think they can get to 8-8. Eight eight. Not sure how Todd Bowles is going to be as a rookie head coach. Uh, that's one thing that kind of scares me a little bit with taking me over. But they do get to face the AFC South, so they, of course they get the uh, Jags and the Titans for a couple of games. The defense would be really good, like you say, with that uh, front as well as they added Lucas and Cromarty. As long as Smith can be serviceable, they added Brandon Marshall, they had Eric Decker, I think they'll be okay. I'm going to say they get to eight wins and take the over. Next is the Detroit Lions in the last 10 years. Four overs, six unders, and a streak of one over. Is the AFC West the NFC West this year. The number is eight and a half. I'm up first. I like this number from Vegas. I think they're going to be right around there. Uh, they have a tough schedule. Man, AFC West and NFC West. Facing good teams there. I think because of that and because of the fact that they lost uh, Sue, and I'm just not sure how uh, not to, uh, I mean, not that it's good. I think it will be a 80% replacement of Sue, but I want to go ahead and go under here and say they go 8-8. I agree. They lost Sue. Don't forget they lost Nick Fairley as well. They also lost Reggie Bush. The offense, you know, they're counting on, I guess, Riddick to step in, but still an unknown. You don't know how injuries are going to catch up to Megatron. It seems the last couple of years he's been nicked up or worse. And you, you mentioned the schedule. The other two words that really come into play here are Jim Caldwell. While he is a very reserved and fine coach, he's conservative to the nth degree, and that always costs you like one win a season, as we well know from indie days. So because of that, I'm going under. Okay. Next up, San Francisco 49ers. In the last 10 years, six overs, four unders, the current streak is one under. If it's the AFC North and NFC North this year, the number is seven and a half, like I mentioned earlier, and you are first. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. This is number one on my board. And because I have not retired from the NFL this year, I could actually play defense for the 49ers, unlike most everyone else. And because I didn't get my coaching staff and lost my head coach, my defense coordinator, a few other coaches, and I promoted some guy that is horrible at press conferences and doesn't seem to in, inspire a team, 
I really don't see how they're going to get to eight wins. So this is my lock of the year. This is my Panthers of last year, Raiders of the year before, Niners under seven and a half. Take it to the bank. Whatever you have to do. I wouldn't say bet your house on it, but you might want to. I'm going to echo every single thing you said. Um, they are your number one favorite, it sounds like. They're actually my number two favorite. I like the, uh, the Colts over is my favorite. This Miners under is my second favorite. I've looked at their roster. I've looked at their schedule. Um, Jim Tomsula gives me zero confidence whatsoever. Uh, I think they're going to go around. Five and eleven, maybe even four and twelve. Uh, to beat this number, they have to get to eight and eight, which I just do not see happening. So uh, we're both in agreement here. This is both one of our top threes. Take the under on the Niners and uh, put some money on it. Lock yourself to the bank at the end of the season. Not even at the end of the season. I think by week ten you might be laughing. <laughs> maybe week eleven. This is- this is true, because last year we actually, the Panthers came on a little run at the end of the season, but we actually walked up our under on the Panthers by, uh, I think, by Thanksgiving. So. Yes, and I, I, I could easily here. see that this year with the Niners where needing to get the eight wins, well, they could be sitting at something like a a 3-10 and 10 mark, and you you know you're there, 3-8, and eight, and you feel really comfortable that you're going to get there. And speaking of the Niners, I know we're not doing um, individual game lines, uh, on this podcast, but I will mention, so we're talking about the Niners. They open the season in week one on Monday Night Football. They are the last game of week one. You know, there's a the, the couple the Monday Night doubleheader in week one. They host the Vikings. The Vikings should be better this year. I like what they did in the draft. Plus, they get Adrian Peterson back. The Niners, I think, are a dumpster fire. Uh, the Niners are favored by four, four and a half, depending on what's supposed to be look at. So you're, you're getting that key number above a field goal. I think the Vikings are going to straight up win the game, honestly. So if you're giving Vikings plus four, four and a half, yes, please. Wow. Extra betting advice from Mark Heflin, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And next up, we have the Green Bay Packers. The last 10 years, five overs, four unders, one push. The streak of one year going over. This year they face the AFC West and the NFC West. The number is 11. I'm up first. Again, I think this is a number, a good number by Vegas. Uh, it's a high number. I think it's tied with the Seahawks for the highest over-under. 11 is just hard to go over. Uh, you have to get 12 and 4. I, I'm going to use my second push here. I, it's just too hard to rely on teams that are 12 and 4. There's too many things that can happen. Um, but yet it's hard to see them going 10 and 6 as well. So I'm going to use my second push on the, on the Packers here. And that was my thought exactly. Uh, if I had to, if someone said you must make a, an over under and you can't push the Packers, I guess I'd go over and ride Aaron Rodgers and hope for the best. But I don't love the schedule. Getting to 12 and 4 is not easy. I think 11 and 5 is perfect. Good job, Vegas. All right, next up we have the Carolina Panthers, our, our team from last year. Thank you, Panthers. In the last 10 years, they have four overs, six unders. Uh, their streak is one year going under, which is all we needed for last year. This year they face the AFC South and the NFC East. Their number this year is eight and a half, and uh, you're at first. While it's not the slam dunk that last year was, I... I clearly would not be placing much on this because I think that's a pretty fair number because they are about an eight-win team. Could I see them getting to nine? Yeah, I guess, but I'd go under. I think eight and eight sounds about right for them. Last year they were seven, eight, and one, right? So they feel like an eight and eight team. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, it's it's not one of my favorites like it was last year. I won't be uh, putting any action on it, but I have a slight lean to the under. I could see eight and eight. I could even see seven and nine. Um, they took Devin, or I mean, look at the first two rounds of the draft. It, they reached for Shaq Thompson in the first round. He'll be okay, but he's not a huge impact first round, at least for this year. And Devin Funches in the second round, I, I really don't like him. And uh, so I'm going I'm to say 7-9 uh, this year. I'll take that on the Next up, 
New England Patriots in the last 10 years, six overs, four unders. They've gone over the number each of the last two years. This year they face the NFC South and the NFC East. The number is 10 and a half. This one, uh, I'm not first for this one. It's hard because we don't know exactly what's going to happen with Tom Brady as of now. He suspended for four games. I think if I was betting, I would say that suspension probably gets reduced to two games. And since I'm going to make that assumption, 10 and a half is a large number, but the Patriots, you know, if they win total, 12 wins, 12 wins, 12 wins, 13 wins, 14 wins. That's the last five years. So based on that, I, I'm going to take over. Not only am I, am I going to agree with you, I would say this is probably third on my top three. Maybe a tied for third. So that way I give you four. But yes, New England, ten and a half. This season they played without Tom Brady. They won 11 games. He went down in the first game of the season. You remember the Matt Castle year? They went 11 and five. So the fact that they're going to miss him for two, three, four games, uh, they'll still beat the Jags in that stretch. It's up in New England. They may actually even come out of that two and two, even if they don't have Brady for four games. And then you don't think that they're going to rally and they're going to do the FU Patriots like they did in the undefeated season after Spygate. Oh, the almost undefeated season. So I don't see a way they don't get to 11 wins. So Patriots, over. All right. Next up, the Oakland Raiders. The worst team in the last 10 years, over under wise. Uh, two overs, eight unders. Uh, they have a streak of three consecutive unders, uh, which we know about. Cause two years ago, the number was five and a half, and we bet on the under, and they, went with, they ended up with four wins. This year, they faced the AFC North and the NFC North, and their number is five and a half, and your first one. Now, as soon as you say the Oakland Raiders, I immediately start to yell under. That's probably bad. I should not be conditioned to do that, although your stat of them being the worst in the last 10 years, probably I should be conditioned to yell under just by hearing Oakland. Wow, I really want to say this year they could get to six wins, but I just don't see it. I'm going to have to go under again. I think they're going to be 5-11. and 11. I think they'll be a fine 5-11, and 11, a tough, a gritty, a hard-fought 5-11. and 11. They'll be a team you don't love playing. Carr's going to get a little better, but they just don't have that much talent yet. They're still working up. So I think 5-11. and 11. So I guess that makes it under, huh? Yeah, I agree with you. I, I just can't quite see them getting to six wins. Um, they have a tough schedule with the, the two North divisions. Uh, I think Cooper was a great pick at number four. I think he'll be a good receiver in the NFL for the next 10 years. Their car, you know, still was a you know, one curve. He may be pretty good by year four, but you know, be a little bit better this year than last year, but I don't see him being uh, a world beater or anything. Just the overall talent of the roster needs to be improved. So, yeah, I'd say five and eleven, maybe four and twelve, and, and take the end of there as well. As well. Next up, the St. Louis Williams. Uh, they're also pretty bad. In the last ten years, they have three overs and seven unders, including going under each of the last two years. Uh, they also faced both of the Northern Divisions this year. Their number is eight. Um, first up, I think that's a pretty good number. I've already used both of my pushes, though. So I'm going to go under, uh, probably because of their schedule. They face the AFC North, which has three playoff teams. And uh, the NFC, or the um, AFC North, which has three playoff teams. They get the NFC North. Uh, there were some tough games in there against the Cowboys, Giants, the Eagles. And then they face the Seahawks twice, uh, the Cardinals twice. And they might get two wins against the Niners. We'll talk about how bad they'll be, but they could even split against the Niners. Gurley, you know, great talent running back, but might not even be playing until week seven or so. So I'm going to take a slight lead on the under here. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you, the under. And for most of the reasons you said, Jeff Fisher does not exude confidence. He, he's never been that great of an offensive mind. He added Nick Foles. I don't think that's going to work out well. Nick Foles is not a world beater. He's not mobile. That was a problem with Bradford. I think Nick Foles is going to get banged up. They don't have receivers. Fisher hasn't been able to find them. 
So I don't think the offense is going to be able to do anything. The defense is fine. They built a, a nice defense, but they're not going to be able to score. So you don't win a lot of games 7-3 to three or 10-7. to seven. So bad luck, I think. I'm going to say under again, St. Louis. All right, next up, Baltimore Ravens. In the last 10 years, six overs, three unders, one push. The current streak is one season going over. They face uh, both Western divisions this year. The number for this year is nine, and you're first up. Yeah, well, what surprised me is that made them the favorites in the, uh, the AFC North. Because they had nine. You mentioned the Bengals earlier, eight and a half. The Browns were six and a half, and we haven't gotten to the Steelers yet, but I believe they're eight and a half as well. So, the favored Ravens, I don't think they're going to get the same play out of Justin Forsett that they did last year. They lost Torrey Smith. I, I know they break. They brought in a rookie receiver. They're breaking in some new other skill position players because Dennis Pitta will maybe never play in the NFL again. But I think this is a year they take a – it's not a step back because they do such a good job drafting, but, you know, it's a half step back. And so nine being the number, I'd lean towards under. All right. Here are the Ravens' win totals for the last uh, few years. 10, 8, 10, 12, 12, 9, 11. Pretty impressive. And yet, with an over under nine, I'm still going under. Uh, this isn't one of my top three, but I do like the under for the Ravens. Steve Smith is another year o- older. He's got to be pushing 40 by now. Um, Forsett had a career year. I think he'll still have a decent year this year, but he's not going to be as good as last year. That, that was his career year. That's the definition of a career year. It, it will not be better. Um, they lost Hody Nata. They lost Nick Fee. They lost Owen Daniels. Uh, they're replacing uh, Toy Smith and Owen Daniels with two rookies. I think Perryman and Williams will be good eventually. They'll just be okay as rookies as they're running the league. I think they have too many um, people to replace, despite the factory of wins that I mentioned and Austin Newsom putting together a pretty good roster. I just don't see it this year. I think uh, I think eight and eight is their ceiling. I think it may be even seven and nine. So. We go under on the Ravens. Next up, we have the Washington Redskins in the last 10 years. Four overs, six unders. Current streak is two straight unders. This year, they face the AFC East and the NFC South. The number is six for this year. I'm up first. I've used both of my pushes. I think this number of six is right around where they're finished, six and ten, but. If I don't see them getting to seven and nine, I'm going to take the under here. I agree. I think this is a team that the head coach has improved himself. The quarterback has so many question marks around him. The team just always seems to be in disarray. The owner will say something three weeks in if it starts poorly. Deshaun Jackson will explode and punch his QB in the face at some point if he doesn't get the ball enough. It it, it will not end well, I'm fairly certain. And because of that, whenever you're not sure, go under. So I would agree. I think this is another 5-11 and 11 type season for Washington. And good luck, Redskin fans, of living through another painful year and then the soap opera that is Daniel Snyder in the offseason. <laughs> so fast, but they need a new honor so bad. Next up, we have the New Orleans Saints in the last 10 years, right down the middle, five overs, five unders. Uh, the current streak is one season of going under. But this year they face the AFC South and the NFC East. They have a over under this year of nine, and it's your go. Oh, nine's a good number. That's a pretty big number. You said the AFC South, so you get a couple wins right there. But I, I don't love... Going over ten and six seems like a big. It seems like too big of a number, so I'd have to say under, just based on the probabilities. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of what the Saints did in the offseason. Uh, they lost two of the big playmakers. Jimmy Graham is gone, and they could Kenny Stills to the Dolphins. 
And uh, so you would think that in the draft, they obviously took someone to replace them, except, oh, wait a second, they didn't draft a single tight end or a single wide receiver, which was pretty shocking to me, at least. Um, I know that, you know, Pete has been uh, touting Josh Hill. We'll see. Um, but uh, especially receiver-wise, they have Brandon Cooks, who took the first round last year, but then Marcus Colston is getting pretty old. And beyond that, they just have a bunch of replaceable parts. So I'm going to say uh, I'm going to meet on under as well. I think they could get to 8-8, they might go 7-9. I don't see them going 10-6. and six, So I would take the under on the Saints as well. Now don't forget they Next got... Up. Don't forget they got Max Unger for Jimmy Graham, so he'll he probably will score a couple touchdowns, right? Yeah. He plays. Not be counting on that. He plays centered, kind of like Timothy Mozgov, right? Yeah, yeah. Or different. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I'm confused. Go ahead. <laughs> Next up, we have. Well, they should maybe if they you know the same city they could Anthony Davis and the tight end big guy. They probably get some touchdowns out of him. They're going to take the over of Anthony Davis on the team. Next up, we have the Seattle Seahawks. In the last 10 years, six overs, three unders, one push. They do have an impressive streak going. They've come over the number in each of the last four seasons. This year, they face both of the Northern Divisions. The number for the Seahawks is 11. And I think it's your no first. Well, 11 seems like a big number. We talked about this with the Packers earlier. I wouldn't love to go either way on this, so please don't put money on this line. But if you think about the Seahawks, they have that home field advantage that is nearly impenetrable. So let's just say they get all eight home games. Now I'm only asking for them to go 4-4 four and four on the road to get to 12 wins. And honestly, with the 49ers in disarray, with the St. Louis Rams not having an offense... I, I think they'll get there. So I would say, if you're forced, take the over. But I don't love it. Yeah, um, I would echo pretty much everything you said. Uh, I would lean slightly towards the over if I had to do something. Uh, I would not put any money on this personally. Um, you know, getting to 12 wins is hard, though. In the last three years, they've won 12 games, 13 games, and 11 games. So they do have the history of it. They added Jimmy Graham to their offense. So... Yeah, like you said, if I had to, I would take the over, but uh, personally, wouldn't touch the number of 11. Next up is the Steelers. In the last 10 years, six overs, four unders, a streak of one over. They should have faced both of the Western divisions. The number is eight and a half, and this is actually this is actually one of my top three Um after looking at it a little bit closer and listening to what you said on the right on the uh, Browns, I would probably replace the Browns as my number three and maybe leave the Steelers as my four. But I do like the over for the Steelers. I just see them getting uh, at least nine and seven. I think the Bengals will just be kind of okay this year. I think they get two wins against the Browns. And um, going off what I said earlier with the Ravens, I think the Ravens have it down here. I think the Steelers can get both the wins against uh, the Ravens in both of their matchups. I think the Steelers are going to go 10-6. They have a really good offense. It hurts that they don't have uh, Le'Veon Bell for the first three games. But once they get him back, they have, honestly, one of the best offenses they have now. They have the best set of triplets of Wacklesberger, Bell, and Brown. Antonio Brown is just a receiving machine. Uh, I think he scored. He had at least five catches and 70-plus yards in every single game last year it was pretty crazy uh, the defense needed some help and they got it in the draft they took um, almost all defensive players in the draft they got some guys that uh, at least a couple guys that will be starters and uh, so I had the Steelers as one of my top threes to go over I didn't have them in the top three but I agree I, I had them going over because I think a 9-7 and seven season is very doable a couple breaks here or there 10-6 and six, and that all helps get you over the 8.5 you mentioned the triplets, the Burger, Bell, and Brown, the Killer Bees, even though Roethlisberger starts with an R. Ben. There we go. Ben, Bell, and Brown. <laughs> there you go. I knew there was a B in there somewhere. But, yeah, no, I, th- I think they've got a really good chance to win the division, honestly. They're going to get two wins against Cleveland, split with the Bengals probably. I actually say they just split with the Ravens because those games are always so 
ridiculously competitive. But, I mean, you get four wins in your division, you get some out. I get the nine or ten seems very doable for the Steelers this year. Next up, the Houston Texans. In the last ten years, they actually have seven overs and three unders. The current streak is one season of going over. This year they face the AFC East and the NFC South. Their number is eight and a half, and it's your go. And because it's a hook, I'm going to go under. I think the Texans are an eight and eight team, and because they said eight and a half, I'll go eight. The quarterback play is really what kills them. I just don't have any faith that they have the right quarterback even on the roster today. So no matter how good that defense is, it'll steal them the wins with Tennessee and with Jacksonville. So it does worry you because they could start with a base of four wins right there. But then if you give them two losses with the Colts, you start looking at the other teams that they're going to play on the schedule. And almost every game other than Tennessee and Jacksonville, they may have the worst quarterback situation. That's never a winning formula. Yeah, I agree with you. The NFL is a very QB driven league. I'm not even sure who's going to be their starting quarterback. It could be Mel, it could be Hoyer. Either way, don't have a lot of confidence. Aaron Foster is a great talent at running back, but I have to expect him to miss at least three or four, maybe five games. Uh, so I'm going to take the under there as well. I could, I could see them maybe get a date made. Right? Um, the only thing, the only thing that scares me with the, the under on the Texas, the JJ Watt is just such a an amazing defensive player. You know, he can just swing a couple games by himself, but uh, I'm still going to take another. Just like you. Second to last, Tennessee Titans. Last 10 years, five overs, five unders. A streak of one year going under. This year they face the AFC East and the NFC South. Their number is five and a half. Uh, I'm off first here. I'm going to take the under. For a lot of the same reasons that I'm taking the under on the box, just with the rookie QB, um, even more of a transition issue than Jameis Winston, uh, going from the spread style Oregon offense to not really sure what the Tennessee will see. Wizard Hunt's never really used kind of a spread system, but uh, there's talk that they may try to use some facets, facets of that to make the transitions for Mariota a little bit easier. But uh, with a rookie QB and a low average defense uh, even though they get to face the Jaguars twice um, they unfortunately do not get to face themselves so I'm going to say the Titans probably top that out on 4-12 and take the under Agreed, under and uh, everything you said they do have the game with the Bucks, so Winston and Marietta maybe they get that, maybe they get a game against the Jags although I think the Jags are slightly better than them because as you mentioned the defense is just bad the offense doesn't have a ton of skill position talent, and you've got a rookie QB with an average offensive line. That would make me worry about getting too many wins. So four wins, that would be double what they did last year so that the coaching staff that comes in after this season when they win four wins will have something to grow off of. Sorry, Miss, sorry, Coach Wizenhut. Yeah, well, Wizenhut is 3-25 in his last 28 games, so... If he gets four wins this year, he'll be uh, quite proven on his recent track record. Last but not least, we have the Minnesota Vikings. In the last 10 years, five overs, five unders. Streak of one year going over. This year they face both of the Western divisions, and their number is seven. And you're up first. I don't know why I decided this, but I'm taking the Vikings going over. I think Peterson's back. He's going to be motivated if he is still with the team by the season's beginning to show that he's still a good running back. Hopefully, you know, their forces way out next year because the salary cap number com- becomes ridiculous. Bridgewater is a, a year further into the NFL. He should improve. They made some okay draft picks. I just I think things are coming together a little nicer for them. I think Detroit might be coming back a little. Chicago fell back quite a bit. I think they'll steal eight wins. I agree with you. Uh, I think they could even get to nine and seven. Honestly, I think Bridgewater will be better in the second year. I think Mike Zimmer is underrated as a head coach. And I think Peterson going back will be huge. I think that, you know, he, at the end of the day, is one of the top 
five or ten running back talents in NFL history. I expect him to come back motivated. I think he'll probably get at least 1,500 yards this year, if not more. And uh, I could see them getting to uh, eight and eight pretty easily, so I would take the over on this as well. There's a potential here with the push with the number eight seven, but I don't, I don't see them going six and ten. So we definitely take the over. Yeah, the and worst thing all, the worst thing that can happen yeah. isn't, you know, it's not a push. So push, you get your money back. Take seven. Yeah. Like you said, I don't see them falling to six. Maybe they don't get to eight. Okay, you push, you get your money back. That stinks. But I feel like the upside's there. So now to recap, like to we've hit all 32 like to... teams, and I want you to remind me who your top three were. I'll mention my top three, and then everyone can rush out, drain their bank accounts, and follow our advice. So my top three were the going over on the Colts at 10 and a half, going under on the Niners at 7.5, and, and going over on the Steelers at 8.5. And, and mine were the Niners, under 7.5, the Patriots over ten and a half, the Colts over ten and a half, and I also had Cleveland in there tied at six and a half under. I added the Colts because yeah. you know I have to have a tie at third somewhere. Yeah, so Colts and Niners we both agree on, so that's those are pretty strong. And then uh, I like your others as well. You know, Patriots like you said, they're going to be in FU mode, and uh, Brady probably only misses two games. For them to get uh, 11 wins or more, they seem to do that every single year in their sleep. And then the Browns, that's, their offense is just going to be really, really bad. They have a decent stable of running backs, I guess, but when you're good, you know, going into the second half of every single game behind by at least 10 points, it, that doesn't matter as much. So, and again, I like their under. So. Yeah, and again, if anyone out there wants to draft Cleveland wide receivers, please email support at steelscorpionsports.com we'll invite you to a fantasy league you can join as many as you like and we will compete with you every single league absolutely all right mark so that wraps up our over under discussion are there any other nfl tidbits that you want to add to the podcast before we sign off no, nothing major. Not a whole lot going on right now. Just some OTAs and, and such. And then uh, I'm looking forward to some later podcasts uh, later this summer. We'll probably look at some of the lines for some of the, you know, the actually lines are out for all week 1 through 16 games. But maybe we might look at some of those. And later, probably in August, we'll look at some of the prop bets that make us come outside as far as. Um, division winner prices as well as they have Jarvis uh, prop bets for passing, rushing, receiving. It's fun to look at some of those. And then, of course, uh, we'll start to look at fantasy rankings and, and mock drafts and get pumped for the 2015 fantasy season. Definitely. Although I'm surprised you didn't mention the Colts banner raising ceremony as a big off-season update. I mean, it's not every year that you get to finish second in your conference. I would hope that it's just a, uh, a banner for the division title, which is pretty common for teams to do. So. Oh, no, it was not. It clearly states it was the AFC runner-up. That's kind of embarrassing. I would rather just have a banner that says AFC South division champion. Correct. 100% agree. I'm embarrassed that the Colts would even think to raise that. In the same week, I think that Robert Kraft gave out the Super Bowl rings to the Patriots. So good timing on that, Ursay. But, again... That's off-season news for you. It's a slow news day. Glad we could get the podcast out for you here with the over-unders. And do tune back in. Keep checking the site. We will have a few other podcasts in the months of July and into August. As Mark said, we'll break down some of the week one lines. We'll break down some other prop bets for the season. And then once August gets here, be ready to be inundated with a number of mock drafts with fantasy analysis because that's why you come to the site. Don't forget to check us out steelscorpionsports.com a better species of fantasy football learn more about the mulligans the multiplier and the all play format and find out why we believe there's only one way to play fantasy football and that's the steel scorpion sports way with that signing off from san diego i'm jeff miller signing off from san diego i'm mike Griffin. talk to you later sports fans